On today's video, what I want to talk about is these things. We have quite a few discussions in shop about them. Um, rod bands, um, like these tip and, tip and book protectors with the elastic, uh, elastic in the middle of them. Then we've got as normal bands. Some people use them all the time. Some people don't bother at all. Um, I just want to tell you my reason for using them and not using them, if that makes sense. I used to be a massive fan of these ones when they first came out, the top and tail ones with the elastic in, because when you put them onto your rod, your rod is really nicely protected, top and bottom. If you've got a feeder on, you can wrap it in the middle with the uh, Velcro one if you want to do, but if not, it just keeps your rod all nice and tight in the middle. So there is pluses and there's and against for them. Now, as I say, I was a massive fan of these when they first come out, but I don't use them anymore, apart from on one rod, which I've just picked up then. Um, and I'm gonna tell you the reason why I don't use them anymore. As, as match anglers and um, fishing different competitions and different venues, you some, in, instead of breaking your rods down every time you go fishing, uh, if you're fortunate enough, you can have a few different rods set up for different venues. So when you're going somewhere, you can just pick a rod up and off you go because it's all set up and it's banded up or whatever. So you know it's all ready to go. But I was fishing at Allcroft this winter and I needed my soft rods. As it gets colder, the fishing gets harder, but there's a lot of skimmers to catch at Allcroft and roach close in. So you want your short, soft rods at certain times of year but like at the beginning of October and that when we were going, it were all method feeder fishing because the carp were still feeding, so the skimmers didn't have a play in it. But I'd been on Southfield earlier on in the summer and what have you, so I'd had my short rods in, which you use a lot at Southfield, not just for the roach and skimmers, but for the bream as well. But uh, as, as I say, then as the winter moved on and we went fishing at Allcroft and the winter pair started, the feeder, feeder masters pairs, a problem occurred and it took me a couple of weeks to suss out what the problem was and then I found out it was my top and tail rod protectors. As I said, I'm not saying that they're not good, I'm just saying I don't use them and I'm going to tell you the reason why. So, I'd had my rods for Southfield with my nice fine ounce, ounce and a half quarter tips in, three quarter ounce tips in. Moved on to my method feeder rods, my carping rods and what have you, all fine. But then it come to where we were having to start fishing for the skimmers again. So I wanted my fine rods. So goes into the garage, picks my rods up. They were all set up anyway, but I picked them up and they had these on them. So we've gone to Allcroft, one Wednesday match or one Sunday match, I can't remember. When I've got my rods out and, I'm, and I've threaded them up and I've uh, put my feeder on and I've chucked them out, I'm sat looking at my tip and my tip were bent and hanging over at the end as though it were like, there was, some, there was definitely something wrong with it. And I'm thinking, well, there's no tow on water because it's a lovely sunny flat day, so it can't be towing. And I'm thinking, why it, the, there's no wind or out like that going where you're picking your line up and what have you. And, it, and I'm sat looking at my tip and it was doing my head in all day because my tip were bent over and it were bent round and it looked horrible. Well, I've come home, I've fished, we caught a few fish and what have you. Anyway, it was bugging me that because I'm not the tidiest and pristiest of anglers when I'm fishing, but stuff like that really narks me and I like, I like my tackle to be spot on when I'm fishing. So I've come home and then we went fishing again and as I got my rods out of my sleeves, it suddenly twigged on what was happening. Because I'd put my rod in the sleeves, like that on some of your tips or some of your rod sections when you've taken them all down and put them inside they're all supposed to be or more or less supposed to be the same length but you can have a slight adjustment with either a spigot or your tip now one can be a, a couple of millimeters taller than the other one and that's what had happened so when i'd put my rod in and i'd put and i'd tightened my spool back up my tips had pushed up the, into the top of the um, top and tail set and my tip had bent. And because it had been in my garage for a couple of six, four, five, six weeks, it had actually bent my tips. 
Now, I had to replace three tips at 20 odd quid a piece, so I won't rate chuffed about that either. It cost me a load of money. But that is the reason why I don't like, particularly nowadays, the top and tail ones. The only rod in my rod collection that I do use it on, and I don't know whether this was done because of this, I'm not sure. I've never asked uh, Mick or anybody at Preston about it. But when you actually pull that off, your tip section is a lot shorter than your middle section and your butt section. So it's never going to get caught on the inside of it. Whereas most of your other rods, like that one, I don't know if you can see on the video, that one's supposed to be the same height, but my tip's actually a tip ring longer than the other one. So if I put that in a top and tail, it's going to be bent like that all the time. And over a period of time, if you don't use it, the stop like that, and, it, and to me, it looks horrible. So that is the reason now I don't use them apart, on my, apart from on my Preston Distance Master because it can't happen on that rod. So what I use for most of my rods now is just a simple um, butt one, what fits around my butt, and then I leave the top part of my rod free like that. So it doesn't matter what's happening at the top end of the rod, it can't get bust by another, another tip, tip connector. So I only use nowadays a bottom one on my rods. Sometimes if I leave a feeder on, like if we're going method fishing or whatever, I'll sometimes put the, a band in the middle and leave my feeder on it then. And, I, and for that I use the Alcanon ones because they're really stretchy and they just keep wrapping them round so your feeder and everything goes in with them ones so that's why I use them ones, they're really good. But for the butts I just use a bottom one, Preston do them, uh, Drennan do them, there's quite a few companies do that kind as well and I just find that better for myself. And also when the rods are free like that, when you drop them into your ready hold all my theory on it as well is when the rod goes in like that, your top section always goes to the back of the old all and fits in the groove on the back of your old all. So your tips are always right at the back and, it, and your front part of your rod seems to protect your top section of your rod so you don't get as many damages on your eyes and things as well.